God. So let's go straight into it. We're going to start with 1 John 5, 19, where it says the whole world. Someone says whole world. The whole world is under the control of the evil one. Strong beginning tonight, right? Aren't you excited you came to church? Listen, the whole world is under the control of the evil one. With destruction, with division, with death, the Bible says that the devil came to steal and kill and destroy. That's awesome. So encouraging to be in church, isn't it? To hear that. The whole world is here. We see it, Daniel. We see it everywhere. It's just chaos out there. Yes, it is. Let's not be surprised because that's what the Bible says, telling us. And that's why Jesus, when he's asking us or teaching us how to pray in, jo in Matthew chapter 6, he's saying, pray like this. He says, our Father in heaven, holy and honored is your name. And then he says, everyone, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, God, on earth as it is in heaven. The whole world is under the control of the evil one. And that is why Jesus is telling us to pray, your kingdom come. That it is in heaven may be here on earth. Your will be done, God. As it is in heaven, may it be done on earth. As a Christian, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, I have one mission. And that is to pray his kingdom and his will to come here on earth and then to step out and do something about it as a witness, as an ambassador, making a difference for Jesus. That is my mission. That is, I'm getting excited right now because I'm preaching myself happy. Because when you're reminded of this, reminded that you are not alone, reminded that greater is he who lives in you than the one who lives in this world, because we fight not a fight, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in the heavenly realm. So we have a fight, we have a wrestle match to do, not in our own power, but through Jesus who lives in us. Because the whole world is under control of the evil one. And we have a mission to bring his kingdom. The John the Baptist says his kingdom is near. Jesus says the kingdom of God is now here. Listen. So we have a mission to establish the kingdom of God wherever we go as believers, as a church. So put a pin there because we're going to get back to that just in a minute and, and tie some strings together. I'm going to throw out a different string here for just, for just a couple of minutes. And then we're going to look at everything together because... I started to study something last week when a new friend of mine that I, I was getting to know, and, and he told me, you Christians, you always talk about seasons. And he said that in a way, like, you're weird. You guys are weird. You Christians, you always talk about it's a season for that, and you see, I'm in this kind of season and that kind of season. And I, I started to think a little bit. I'm like, are we? Like, are we talking like that? And, and or, Is that weird? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then I, I had to go back and, and just remind myself of what the Word of God said. And the Bible is talking about seasons. And that is why we are talking about seasons. Just, just look at Genesis 1 and 4. God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heaven separating the day from the night. And let them be, what is it, signs and seasons. They are there for seasons. God created the universe and he started to spin the world around and tossed it around the sun. Hence, we have seasons here on earth. So we see that God established seasons, okay? And then we know Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, For everything there is what? There is a season. And the time for every matter under heaven. There's a season for for everything and and these are just two of many examples in the word of God talking about this Jesus goes back to it in Matthew 24 when he's saying hey there's seasons in time that you need to read and signs that you need to understand in the shifting of seasons like the fig tree you see the the buds of the fig tree you know that summer is near read the seasons and the signs of time the same way so he's talking about this God is establishing that there is season so my friend i have to tell him again like it's not weird it's the way god has made it okay so what kind of season does the bible says we have what well, we saw we have natural seasons we're in the heat of summer right now someone say god bless our hearts right 
Like some of you cannot wait for this season to be over. It's, it's, it, it's not soon enough, right? Fall is coming. Hallelujah. Some of you like can't wait for that next season. And then we also see in Matthew 24 and, and different places that, that God has those big picture spiritual seasons set in place in the earth. Now the Bible says we're in the season of the church. We're in the time of the Gentiles. And that is the time we are in right now. Another place in the Bible calls it the, the time of grace. Now is the time to reach the people and, and for him to build his church. And this season will end. This is just a short version of Pastor Chris's amazing teaching on on the book of Revelation, but when Jesus returns, he will establish a new season, the millennial reign, okay? So, so there will be different seasons, and we know that as a church family and Christian individuals as well. In the beginning of this year, a new season started, and, and our pastor, he had a word for our church family that this year is the year when we would be stronger and stronger. We'd be better and better. We're going to grow with God this year, and and literally we know how much we needed that word because none of us knew that two months later we were stepping into a pandemic season. Not just us, but the entire world is turning upside down. We need God more than ever before. And in your natural life you have seasons and, and, and some of you in the dating season right now, you're like looking for something, right? And some of you are in the, in the family building season, raising kids season. Hallelujah, God bless your heart, my heart, right? And some of you are like, well, we are out of that season. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. And, and, but we are in different seasons in life as well. So we can see that, that this is in the Bible. God has established this now. This is where I believe Christians can get it mixed up and get it a little bit wrong. And I believe that's what my friend is more referring to. Because now we are mixing the truth that God has established seasons and we are blaming everything in our lives on seasons. Well, I'm in a season as a Christian right now that I'm just going to focus upon myself. There is no scripture that talks about that. It's not in the Bible. But the season is to serve someone else. Now, don't get me wrong. If sometimes tragic things happen in life and we go through heartbreaking events, and yes, we do need to pause and take a break and focus on ourselves to find healing. Yes, okay? But that's it. The rest is the season is serving someone else. Someone will say, say well, I'm in a season of a dry time right now. Like, like the Israelites walk through the wilderness. I feel that dry place. Well, let me explain something to you because my Bible says that, the Bible says that now when I have the Holy Spirit and Isaiah prophesies that I can walk into the wilderness and the, the desert will bloom because I'm bringing some living water. I know it's getting sensitive here right now because we love to sometimes look to our lives and we call it a season or we blame the season when it's really our misbehavior or disobedience or, or, or foolishness, to be honest. But it's more comfortable to blame a season. So, so, so now let's bring it all together. Let's, let's look at how we can treat this and, and how this can become very practical and challenging for all of us. Because in Ma Mark chapter 11, we have now a scripture that brings it all together. The kingdom of God with the seasons. This is what it says. The next morning in chapter 11, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. He was hungry. I love that. I feel him. <laughs> he noticed a fig tree in full leaf a little way off. So he went over to see if he could find any figs. Jesus is hungry. He sees a fig tree. He goes to eat. Okay. But there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for fruit. No fruit on the tree because it was the wrong season. Now. Before we read the end, you see the end there, but before we read it, you would think that Jesus would have said, yeah, uh, of course, it's the wrong season. I created this. I know the system. But instead, Jesus, <laughs> he said to the tree, he's now speaking to the tree. And he said, may no one ever eat your fruit again. And then when you continue to read the story, it says that the fig tree got cursed and it withered and died. And the next morning when they saw it again, the disciples are surprised because it is completely 
dead. What is going on? Like it's almost when you read it, it's like you get a little excuse to, to, to be hangry now and then because it looks like Jesus was not just hungry, but he, yeah, he was a little like in state. He was hangry. He's so like, like it's, it's almost like he's irritated and frustrated and he's speaking to the tree and, 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 and telling it that you're a stupid tree. I want fruit. There's no fruit. Like you would think that God who established the seasons would have known that there is no fruit because it says in the Bible that it was not the season for its fruit. So what is going on? Had Jesus forgotten about this? What is this story telling us? I'm believing that this story is telling us that yes, there are seasons. We see it in this scripture. There are laws. There are rules set in place here on earth that whole creation is submitted to but we also see that there are things that can override those laws let me explain this to you because when the creator is walking on the earth that he created the Bible says that everything is created by Jesus. In Jesus, nothing exists that doesn't exist by him and through him. Jesus was an active part of creation. He's not a part of creation, but he was a part of creating everything. So the, the creator of heaven and earth are now walking on the earth. He who established every law. He created the seasons. He created a law. If someone can override the law, it's the one who created the law. If someone has the right to change the rules, it's the one who set the rules in place. Listen, Jesus did not come to submit to the laws of this world, but he came to establish another kingdom. He brought a different set of of laws and that is why he is now walking around and saying now the kingdom of God is here may the will of God be done may the kingdom of God come as it is in heaven because you see the kingdom of God mm, is working differently than the human kingdom now we read and I want to remind you that the entire world is under the control of of the evil one but I have some good news to you you do not belong to this world you belong to a different kingdom you belong to the kingdom of God the kingdom of heaven and your role your assignment your mission is to establish that kingdom here on earth so Jesus is now walking with the kingdom of God may your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven let's let's take a sneak peek what heaven looks like and start to understand what he's doing with this fig tree. Because in Revelation 22, verse 1 and 2 it says, Then the angel showed me a river, showing you a glimpse of heaven. With the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the center of the main street. On each side of the river grew, grew a tree of life. And listen now. The tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit. With a fresh crop each month, the leaves were used for medicine to heal the nation. Jesus is establishing the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Jesus has lived an infinite, infinity, whatever that word is, forever in heaven. He created it all. So now Jesus is thinking of heaven. His, his home turf is heaven. What he knows, he knows in my kingdom, the fruit trees are not just bearing fruit one month a year. They are bearing fruit all the time. The trees of heaven in the kingdom of God, they constantly bear fruit fruit so what he's doing when he sees a tree he's used to always finding fruit on the tree because that is the kingdom of God that is what he knows a fruit tree is about it's, it's all about bearing 
fruit. It's supposed to bear fruit. But now, Daniel, you're undertaking it a little bit too, too far right now because we also read in the Word, you had it on the screen in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, that there are seasons. Yes, there are seasons. I'm glad you're asking. Let's read that one scripture once more. And now we're going to see it in a different way because now we see in chapter 3, verse 1, it says, For everything, yes, there is a season and a time for every matter where? Under heaven under heaven you see the kingdom of god is not is not submitted to any rules under under heaven it's a part of heaven it doesn't have to submit to the rules under heaven heaven because it is heaven and that is why jesus is asking you to pray may your kingdom come may your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven because here on earth we are submitted to the laws of the earth we are submitted to to the seasons of the earth and i'm not telling you that you can go out now and pray that summer will disappear that's not how it works dang but i'm telling you that you and i we do not have to be under the control of the evil one. I'm telling you tonight that we don't have to submit to his set of laws and his way of doing things. Because when you are walking here on earth, you are walking with a new kingdom. You have your eyes fixed on heaven. You have your, your, your eyes fixed on Jesus. And you don't have to submit to the earthly laws. This story of the fig tree and the cursed fig tree, I believe it's here as a reminder, proof for us that this is what faith is. That we are living here on earth, but we are living by a different set of rules. We are living in the kingdom of God. I walk in faith and not by sight. I walk with the kingdom of God. I see his manifestation of his promises released when we walk and we believe in him listen this is what second uh, timothy 4 2 says preach the word be prepared in season and out of season it doesn't matter what season you're currently in it doesn't matter if it's summer or winter or what season in life we are called that in every season we preach the word of God. Psalm 1 says that you are, when you're planted in the kingdom of God, you are like a tree planted by the riverbed and you will always grow. You will always have green, green leaves. You will never wither. You will bear fruit because your roots are deep into the kingdom of God. And it doesn't matter if there's a drought out there. It doesn't matter if the seasons shift and change because you are planted in the kingdom of God. You have a different set of of roots and rules so now when the creator of heaven and earth are walking here on earth he sees a tree and he is expecting the tree to bear fruit in his kingdom the the, the tree is supposed to bear fruit so if we are the trees planted in his kingdom what fruit is he expecting of you and me i have three quick things to wrap up this message something practical that we can learn from so here are the fruit now that the creator is looking for no matter what the season is called no matter what we are going through there are fruit there the things that he expect of you and i the first thing is growth anything that is alive will grow we heard pastor chris preach this past sunday such an encouraging and challenging and empowering message of expand ex increase and grow and stretch jeremiah 12 and 2 says you have planted them like Psalm 1. Yes, they have taken root. They grow. They grow. If you are planted by God, He expects you to grow. Yes, they bear fruit. You're expected to grow. You're expected to bear fruit in every season of life. This is what 2 Peter 3 8 and says grow in grace and understanding. Listen, you have never arrived. You may have been a Christian for 40, 50 years. You think that we sometimes we think, well, I, I think I get it now. No, Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 that if we think that we know something, we have not even started to know what we ought to know because there's so much more in the kingdom of God to discover. 
So grow in grace and understanding of our Master and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grow, stretch, increase. There's more. Pastor Chris usually says if, if you think you have arrived, you actually started to decline. There's always another step to take with God. Draw near to Him and He will draw near to you. Grow closer to Jesus day after day. Number two, God expects us. The Savior looks for the fruit of the Spirit in our life. We have the list in Galatians chapter 5. It says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is a set of fruit that is not dependent on the law here on earth. The world may be under the control of the evil one, but it doesn't matter how mean your boss is. It doesn't matter how much the other people of your workplace are gossiping. You live under another law. You live in the kingdom of God. And when we are planted in him, he's expecting to find these fruit. And we can never say, well, guess what? I'm not in the season to bear the fruit of love in my life. No, that's not how it works. If we are planted in him, we are expected to bear the fruit of love. Of joy, of kindness, of, of patience. So he's expecting to find out in us if we are planted. So if I don't see it, I have to dare to ask myself, where is my root? Where am I going? Where am I sucking life from? Is it the word of God? Is it the presence of God? Is it serving? Is it making a difference? If, if not, something is wrong. But we are called to bear fruit. If I'm a part of the tree. I will bear fruit. Jesus said that in John 15 and 2. And every branch in me. That does not produce fruit. He removes. And he prunes every branch that produces fruit. So that it will produce more fruit. So Jesus says, so abide in me. Be in me. Stay in me. The last one for tonight. God expects us to have the fruit of people. To influence others. I had to throw in two scriptures here. We already read it. 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Preach the word. Be prepared. In season and out of season, in 1 Peter 3.15 says, And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready. How often be ready? Always. All the time. Be ready. Be prepared. He's expecting you to be an ambassador. He's expecting you to make that difference for him. He's expecting you to, to always share the good news, to be ready. Listen, people are dying. The world is under the control of the evil one. That's where we started. But Jesus has called you and me to make a difference. And you and I, we will not complain that we are in the wrong season. No, we are under another set of laws. You are an ambassador. This is the last scripture. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, he's crying out through you. We plead on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled with God. I'm an ambassador for Jesus, not for my own sake, but because there are people out there that need to be reconciled with God. And he's got no other plan than you and I. Our mission is to be witnesses, to be ambassadors. You are a living, walking embassy for the kingdom of God. And where you walk, there is a different set of rules and laws put in place. It doesn't matter where you are because you carry with you that embassy. Eight years ago, Stefan and I and our kids, we went to the American embassy in Stockholm, Sweden. To apply for a visa to, to move over here. And, and it was fascinating because even though we were geographically in Stockholm, Sweden. As soon as we walked through the gates to the American embassy. We walked into a different set of laws. Legally, we were now on American soil. So we may have been geographically in Sweden. But we were, we were now in America. So my role as a spirit-filled believer and disciple is to carry his kingdom wherever I go to be that embassy wherever I go because you see the kingdom of the earth may say 
He is sick. That's sickness. That's a curse. And that's, that may be what, what the world is saying. But listen, when they step into my embassy, when they step into this realm, there is another set of laws. And my king has said, lay your hands on the sick and they will recover because through my wounds they have been healed. It's a different set of laws. So the world may be under the control of the evil one, but not in this embassy, not in this kingdom, not where I go, because I carry something else. I represent something greater than myself. I'm an ambassador for Christ. You're an ambassador for him. The world may say, well, this is the wrong season. Listen, it's COVID out there. It's election year. It is four months to harvest. But Jesus said, I have another kingdom. Now I have another set of laws. Lift your eyes because the fields are ripe for harvest today. You may say it's the wrong season, but Jesus says it's now. Because he's expecting fruit. He's expecting us to influence people to reach more and more. So you and I, we have a kingdom responsibility. That is to lift our eyes above the loss of this world. Not to be frightened. Not to be worried. Not to be conformed into the loss of this world. But to lift our eyes. To listen to another set of laws. We have a responsibility. An assignment from heaven to fix our eyes on Jesus. To abide in him. To think about heavenly things. So that I, so that you, that we can become vessels of his work. Filled with his glory, filled with his power, filled with his anointing. And that's how we represent his kingdom. And that's how we can bear fruit in every season. Do you believe that? Let's put our hands together and thank God for his word. I want to ask for a moment if we can close our eyes and bow our head wherever you are. In your home or in this room because now I believe. If we are willing and open our hearts, as we said in the beginning, tonight I'm, I'm ready to receive your word, God. I'm willing to obey it. This is the time when it can come, become personal and make a difference in your heart. And I believe that you're here in your home, maybe in the room, and you have not taken that first step into his kingdom. He's inviting you into his kingdom right now. And as soon as you're stepping over that board and says, yes, I want to be part of your kingdom, there's an exchange that is taking place. He's taking the filthy rags, the Bible says, of sin from that old kingdom. And he's replacing it now with the clothes of his kingdom, a royal robe of righteousness. He's here to forgive you of your sin, to give you a fresh start, a new beginning, to start a new life. He wants to make you a new creation. That is the first step. So that we can abide in Him, belong to Him, know Him, get to know Him more and more, and better and better. That we may live in His kingdom with peace and love, and kindness, and patience and goodness, and self-control. That He may move into your heart. If you never asked Him for that first step to forgive you of your sins, tonight is your night. I'm going to count to three and I want you to lift your hands in your home or in this room and say, yes, that's me. Maybe you have prayed a prayer of forgiveness before, but tonight you just know that God is calling you home, calling you back to his kingdom because you've been walking away from him. Today he's knocking on the door to your heart and he's saying, I want to know you. I want to be with you. Make that hand ready. One, receive his forgiveness. Two, three, lift that hand. Thank you. Thank you. The room people lifting a hand. I believe you're lifting your hand in your home as well. Take that hand right now. Place it on your heart. Because that's where the miracle is going to happen. That's when exchange is going to take place. Your sin is going to be replaced with his righteousness. So I want to lead you in a prayer. I'm asking everyone in every home or in this room, let's all pray together loud and clear to help those who are praying this for the first time. Everyone say, Jesus. I believe in you. I believe you died for me so that I can live for you. Forgive me of my sin. 
Give me a fresh start, a new beginning. Fill me with your life, with your spirit. Fill me with your purpose, with your strength, so that I can live for you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.